Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 6th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, which says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, as we know, God chose us before we were even in our mother's wombs. And every event of our life led us to one exact moment. And that moment was when he decided to introduce himself to us, make himself known to us, take the scales from our eyes so that we could see the truth that we were sinners in great need of a Savior. We needed a deliverer. On our own, our course was set, and it was one of destruction, and yet he came to save us from that. And when we truly see for the first time what we have been saved from, just as eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for him, so it is, it's never entered into the mind of man it's never entered into the imagination of man. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard what man has been delivered from, what God is seeking to save man from. And when we see what we have been saved from, the punishment, the destruction, the everlasting torture, our hearts will sing an eternal hallelujah that will ring throughout the ages, that will echo across time. And that, friends, is our purpose. You see, sometimes we think that our purpose is here in this life. And although we do have a work to do, and we are on a mission to bring as many with us as we can to support them, to help them, to teach them, to guide them, to encourage them, that is not what this verse is promising. The promise in this verse says that you can be confident of this very thing, this one thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You see, he's fitting us and preparing us and making us ready for what is to come, both in heaven and on the new earth, in service to King Jesus. I mean, stop and think about it. Can you think of one time where an angel has brought someone into the kingdom, has told someone the gospel message, the gospel story? That's not their mission. Their mission is to bring praise to God throughout eternity. And that's our mission too, friends. And ultimately, we will do that through service to one another. When the new earth arrives... When we reign under the ruleship of the Lord Jesus Christ, none will seek his own. Everyone will seek the need of others. Everyone will serve others just as Jesus served man when he came to earth. He bowed and washed their feet. And that's exactly what he promises us, that we'll spend eternity bringing him glory and praise, recognition and honor for all the great things that he's done. And we will know it more fully then than we do now. As much as our hearts sing hallelujah now and praise our God for the great things that he has done, even more so because we will see the whole picture when we arrive. We will know the full story. And so he is doing a work in us day after day after day. You may not be who you want to be, but praise God, you're not who you used to be. And that's the point of this passage. He's chiseling away all the things that aren't going to be fit for the kingdom. So that when you get to the kingdom, when that day arises, you will be ready to take on your new robe of righteousness, step into eternal glory, and spend every moment of your day Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. That's the extent of what waits for us, friends. And I hope that that excites you and fills you with anticipation. 
because that's what he says in chapter 2 in Philippians, the same book, verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Will there be many things there that we can enjoy? I'm sure, but through everything, he will receive all the glory. Nothing will be about us anymore. Self will not exist. We can't even really get our minds around it because we are so selfish in this life. We are so self-centered in this life. But in the life to come, our purpose will be to serve his good pleasure. So as the Bible tells us in other places, in all things, give God glory, friends. Because all of those things that you think are inconveniences, all of those things you count painful or bringing you misery, suffering, and hardship, every one of those are designed for one specific purpose, friends, to fit you for the kingdom of God. So when those what you call bad events occur in your life, no matter how minor or how major, give him the glory in all things because there is a purpose in mind. And he who has begun a good work in you will perform it every moment of your life. He will continue to mold and shape you into the exact image he wants you to be until the day of Jesus Christ. And that day, friends, is the day that he returns for the second time to this earth to take back what is rightfully his. And you and I are a part of that. We were rightfully his. We were stolen from him. And he purchased us back through the shed blood that he gave on Calvary. Oh, how our hearts should be full of praise and thanksgiving for the great things that our God, our King, has done for us. Worms, creatures of unimaginable vile and evil, and yet he stepped off his throne of glory and he serves us. Oh, how our hearts should be full of hallelujahs, friends. Well, I love you. I'm so glad that you spent a few moments with us this morning. I pray that your journey will be blessed. And I pray that as those bad things occur in your life, that you'll lift your head to the heavens. You'll lift your hands and you'll give God praise and glory in all things. As he wills and until tomorrow, friends, I love you. And I'll see you on the next video.